This is Critical Nonsense, our high lowbrow show about culture, science, and tech. This week, Aaron asks us about mind wine. Come along and ride on a fantastic... This is what a Joey sounds like. I don't know the Edith Pilaf words. This is what an Aaron sounds like. <laughs> and this is what an executive producer and dangerous mind, Jess Vander, sounds like. Hi, this is Jess. Oh, that was that was uh, that was a voyage, just like what I think we're going to go on today. <laughs> Is there anything, dear nonsensical nonsenses, that we needed to house clean before we get into the the pod today? Should we no. Just, no, no. I mean, I have a question for Jess, but I don't know if this is. I just wanted to see how the vanilla talk went. No, oh, yeah, yeah, please. It was great. Well, it clean. Was, it was good. <laughs> House clean. Do we need to give any context to the vanilla talk for listeners? Uh, like first time listeners, for example? About a month ago, I uh, did a, a, a talk at an underground venue for nerds. Uh, that's like a comedy of The first uh, rule of, of nerd nerding. club is we don't talk about nerd club. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, it was sort of one of those things where... Um, a bunch of nerds convene for um, the entertainment of learning about stuff. And I, as you all know, have my uh, extended years long rabbit hole obsession with vanilla and, and gave a talk about it. And it was kind of awesome. It was a sold out show. Uh, and it, uh, it it's just like a, who knew that I could possibly uh hold the attention of of a, of a crowd for 20 minutes talking about vanilla but people were into it and i was so happy uh, i had several people come after me saying that they were uh come after me they were came after the show to talk to me and uh and even messaged me a few days later saying i'm still thinking about this uh which is really i mean that's all i could ask for so uh who knows who knows maybe one of these days i'll 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 do a, a, re- a refresh revisitation but it was great thanks for asking amazing uh, now we're amazing. cleaning amazing <laughs> yes yes and like i just gotta say jess i mean come on that's not surprising i could listen to you talk about anything all day long but vanilla in particular bolt me in strap my eyelids open <laughs> oh my like goodness. i'm ready to clockwork vanilla what you got so <laughs> thank you for putting that to the world that's dope i I appreciate that, let alone the fact that the two of you have spoken on actual stages to, to many, many crowds of people. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I did this small venue in New York for just a, a couple of nerds. But that's great. We're all we're all doing different things. <laughs> it all starts somewhere. It literally all starts somewhere. Oh, yeah. It started with a drop of vanilla. Oh. And I, Aaron, you want to set us up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, here we are. It's uh, mid to late November when we're recording this in the year of our Lord 2024. Um, and so I've been on I've been on a journey and I don't think it's a surprising journey for many listeners of the pod. Uh, and in overhearing a lot of conversations around folks in the office and bars and restaurants, like a lot of people are on a journey. So I've... Um, gone headlong into both a media detox phase and an algorithm reprogramming phase. Uh, So I, in the past two weeks, uh, and this is um, in the interest of taking care of my mental health um, and sort of getting myself prepared for as best I can, whatever's coming around the corner. Uh, So it's been about, you know, about two weeks or so. And you know, a funny thing happened on the way in, on the way to my brain uh, as a result of this. And I've noticed that like, yes, my I'm like calmer. I'm not I can tell that I'm vibrating at a little bit of a different wavelength than other people who are more tuned into things. But when I'm going to sleep and dreaming, 
my brain is just firing off into so many different places that it didn't used to go to. And it's it's like all of my sensors are like more open because I've just been consuming all like pleasurable content rather than anxiety inducing content, which I didn't realize. And so, you know, I've realized that my mind grapes have taken on a slightly different hue. And so just to make this a little bit of a popcorny silly conversation, I'm curious what varietal of mind wine yours are lately. First of all, super casual that you're just like, oh, I did this thing and I I feel dramatically calmer. Like you're being like so casual about it. But like, that's not like a big deal. Uh, it's fair. Can I actually feel give... like a big deal? I'll. I'll give I'll, I will give like a slightly more precise explanation and a plug for it. Yes, it feels very different, like significantly different. Um, it was, you know, November 7th that I woke up and uh, I literally the first thing that I did, I um, took the New York Times off my phone. I took the Washington Post off my phone. I unsubscribed from the Washington Post, but that's a separate story. I, um, what else did I do that same day? I deactivated my Twitters, all of my Twitters, like hard cut off all of them. I went through my podcast feed in Spotify and I unsubscribed from all of my identity and current events politics, uh, current events and politics podcasts immediately. And I then for about a week, whenever I went into YouTube, would be very, very, like, very, very present of, like, no, I am not watching anything recommended to me. I am inputting things. So I'm inputting silly celebrity interviews. I'm inputting more coaster information and news that I want to know about. King Daka, RIP. It's getting removed from Six Flags Great Adventure. It is quite the scandal, actually. Whoa. And then um, I also spent a little bit of time just making sure that like I avoided all this. And I and I the 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 piece of the explanation that I want to give is just that like I went into this because my therapist told me 8 years ago when I started going to therapy for this exact reason, hey, once the news gives you the information that you need, you're done. Like that's what get the information you need. Beyond that, it's no longer serving you. And so I realized I'm very connected. I listen to people all the time. I'm connected to very connected people. So like the the biggest and most important things that both will impact me and that I can have an impact on, I'm gonna hear about. But I don't need it. I don't need to absorb it. I don't need to invite it. And so what I have learned is that A, I didn't realize how much time I spent anxiety spiraling from the from the news and content and whatnot. B, I think that independent journalism is more important than ever. So I am actually wanting to stay subscribed to the New York Times. I believe in the New York Times and I believe in their mission and I believe in what they do in general. So like that, I feel like that's really important. But C is like, there's so many joys, like smaller joys in my life that can jump into my mind when I'm asleep if I'm actually putting in more joy when I'm awake and although it is such a privilege to be able to ostrich and I recognize that that is not a privilege that most people have and it is not a privilege that's going to last for a very long time. Um, it's the way that I know that I need to be prepared, that I need to be steeled and that I need to be sober for what is inevitably be going to be just like wildly chaotic so i'm a big advocate for it do so intentionally and remember that everything the last bit that i'll say it it felt really intense doing all these things but i remembered i can resubscribe to anything i fucking want the second yeah. after i unsubscribe for it like this is not that crazy like i can just resubscribe when i want to and that's nice that feels good i mean i think there's a part of this right like if you took let let's say you were doing a similar exercise as this, but around physical fitness, mm -hmm. you would know to take rest days. Your body mm -hmm. would be like, hey, your legs are tired. Maybe you mm -hmm. shouldn't lift today. Or maybe you need to increase your calorie intake or, or, or whatever, right? Like there are 
both practices and I think we have better feedback mechanisms from our body or a better understanding of the feedback mechanisms from our body to take rest periods. <laughs> and right, like what you just expressed is, you know, maybe this is not going to be forever, but for a minute, like giving yourself rest sounds like a good idea and like a healthy way to approach it. Like I, I can find no fault with anything that you said. In fact, it just sounds like wisdom. It also is interesting that piece that you said, Aaron, about like, I'm still going to hear about these things because I, I can imagine on its surface, this seems maybe it even seemed to you at a time like really extreme, like mm -hmm. going cold turkey. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, one cannot actually cold turkey one's media diet because you mm -hmm. you will <laughs> you will come across the things if not in digital form then in person in conversation like there are there are other ways to to uh sort of get access to that information in more controlled places and it's just interesting i'm just noting how even my first reaction was like whoa that sounds like going dark and then mm -hmm. it's like, well, but, but you didn't really, you'd really have to go dark in other ways to, mm -hmm. to not maintain some amount of awareness of mm -hmm. things happening, right? Yes. And likewise, even though there's an immediate, I think the thing that Branch and I have talked about a lot is that you become very, very aware of the moments that you would fill with dead time that you would invite that content in. Mm -hmm. um, because literally it is such a reflex to go to my phone, yes. phone yes. scroll down to X and try to find it. And it's not there. And it take, it was taking me a few beats to be like, where is that thing? And it's like, Oh, Oh, I, uh, Oh, right. I can't do that now. Yeah. So in addition to having that sort of like, there's a little bit of like, okay, it's gone dark. Then there's this hyper awareness of the moments that you were going to use it. Then there's the third piece, which is like, well, I'm going to do something else with this time. And it's less so like, oh, how do I fill this time? But it's like, oh, what do I want to do right now instead pattern of that? Breaking. And it's turned it's pattern, pattern breaking. breaking. Right? It's been reading a book. It's been going to the gym. It's been playing a lot of like crosswords and stuff like that. Like it's still stuff that is mindless entertainment in certain cases, but it has these byproducts of being either good for my body or being good for like not detrimental to my mind. It's just helping me learn new words. There, there's something here in, uh, because we're talking about sort of like the mind wine that I w it is sort of interesting to call out that you are potentially or maybe getting an opportunity for in doing this. I saw a thing about yesterday was just a series of things that you can train your mind and your body on if you chose to. Some of them are like dead reckoning types of things and, and others. But one of the things that caught my attention and I've been <laughs> thinking a lot about is here, let's do like a quick experiment. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's helpful to close your eyes. Never done this experiment before, but close your eyes. Plop. Think about those were my those were my eyelids closing. Just to that was it. the sound <laughs> of my eyelids closing. Bloop. Yeah, yeah. Uh, think about the space behind your body. Think about what is in that environment, what exists there. You you can't use your eyes to get into that space behind your body. What is what is there? What is in that like you know two hundred and forty degrees? around you the we're so focused on our eyes and what's in our visual field and increasingly so with sort of the visual orientation of things there's a moment that your brain starts working a little bit differently if you're thinking about the space behind your body like what mm. what exists in my environment and it feels like different ideas exist there at least to me i don't know if y'all I mean, maybe now this is a non-option for you, Aaron, but uh, Cliff Tan, uh, author of Modern Feng Shui, talks about this idea quite a bit of like the spatial comforts or like the ideas of uh, what makes a, f a space feel good mm. and what makes it feel bad, even if we aren't fully thinking about that all the time. There are certain things like the feeling of having a, a sturdy, 
wall or something behind you. Um, in in feng shui, it's like this this concept of like the turtle is there to like protect you from the back. It's why like working with your back facing your door uh, and and having like you're up against a wall with your back to the whole room and your front door is like a very unsettling feeling because you're like, I have no idea what is behind me or like someone could creep up and it comes back to this sort of like very sort of um, base instinct to want to be in sort of a protected position, which is why if you mm. just turn yourself around and you face outwardly and you put your, you know, your, your chair against the, uh, a wall and that you can see everything is just a much more safe feeling. Even if you couldn't really articulate that before, it, as, some, as soon as someone's like, hey, what if you just twisted this around? They're like, oh, whoa, that's crazy. And it's because it's something that we're just not attuned to or a lot of us aren't really attuned to. Such a good point. Attunement is kind of like the... I guess attunement is the thing that has turned my mind wine from whatever it was into this like inky Merlot that I'm all right with right now. Um, and it's that like, I, I really love that exercise, Joey. And it is forcing me to increase what I'm tuned into. And it's very, again, it's very dumb stuff, but it is all about attention. It is fundamentally about triggers and attention. So what's going yeah. to shift your attention and then what's going to seize your attention and that real uh, yeah switching over and realizing that i am now a little bit more i'm much more in control than i was three weeks ago um and much more intentional about where that attention went mm -hmm. makes me feel like a different person and even to the way that you just described it just with that cliff the cliff tan example it's sort of like it takes very little to reposture yourself to then experience everything in a much more different way um, whether or not you want to sit in that same seat the same way all the time is still under your control. You can try, you can shift it around and try different things all the time, mm -hmm. but not being fixed and not realizing. And I don't know if I think that both of you are less, slightly less rut oriented than I am. I like routine. I like structure. I like pattern. And so it's very easy for me to forget to reposture no this is i mean this is a again it's it's kind of funny how related it is but like when people move into a new place wherever you put that shelf or whatever so true. for so many people is where it stays until you move out like that's so that, true it will always like that couch will always be where you put it and i think what's really interesting is growing up my mom uh as with my mom as an interior designer is like i would come back from school and she will have like rearrange my whole bedroom and like wow. moved everything into different places, which I think for some people is like <laughs> wild because they'd be like, excuse Nightmare. you. <laughs> but for Nightmare. me, for me, I was like, oh, wow. It's like new bedroom. Like, this is so fun. Or uh, yeah. new living room. All of a sudden it looks different, feels different. Just because what if you, you mm -hmm. right, de-rut yourself. Yes. Yeah. My mom used to invite my aunt over who is like, like out there like just generally like exists on a different plane and she <laughs> she didn't work so sometimes my mom would be like hey can you help me just do like a deep clean of the place and i'll pay you uh and so she would come over but my dad hated it because yes. she would just rearrange the whole house like yeah she's yes. like this should go here and this should go here and some things made sense and other things definitively did not make did sense not but I used to do the same. I used to be excited to come home, be like, oh, well, everything's different. Like, like what's going on? And I used to rearrange yeah. my room like at least once a year when I was little. But like Becky is not into that. It's like punctuated moments. Every couple, like three years, we will take yeah. a time and we will think about it for six months and then we will like readjust. <laughs> uh, so I don't do the it audit. as often, you know? It's but the it, the, audit. The, yeah, the audit. The, well, the reason I was even bringing up that behind spacing is like you're in this moment. You brought it up, Aaron, right? Like the rut, like you get to reinvent the new habits that you want to fill. And like there's like the one component that we've talked about many times, like the restorative power of boredom and like, mm -hmm. right, which is like essentially rest. You're You're fighting your impulse to explore and search and do other things and be like still for a moment i feel myself in like saturday morning i've been a lot better yes. over the past few years of 
not working on the weekend, like without, you know, with some exceptions, but like really trying to make a concerted effort yeah. not to, to work on the weekends. And I wind up like catching myself on Saturday morning, like instead of like looking at email or instead of like looking at like team chats or something, I'm like filling it in that phone space. I'm like, stop it. Like, stop. Why am I in this phone space? I don't want to be here, but like the rut is, is like grooved in where I'm just like slightly adjusting it to like whatever, like social media or something like that. And I'm like, stop. Like, I don't want, I don't want this right now, but I'm, I'm still here. Why am I here? This is where I, there's something really weird and maybe twisted in a bad way, <laughs> but I think there's something to having your, like your future judgy self, uh, mm. sort of, uh, sort of separated from you looking at you being like, is that, is this like a great, mm -hmm. you, like, are you really like you're doing this? This happened to me yesterday, last night. Uh, I had found that there was this bird lecture. Yes. <laughs> it, yes. There was, there was this bird lecture going on. It got dark at like 430. I was going to have to bike to get there. I was like, oh, the temptation is just to stay home and watch a TV show. But then my judgy future self was like, yeah, but you're young. Why do you live in New York if you're just going to spend another <laughs> night like watching TV? That's boring. What if you went and learned about bird brains? And, I was, and then I was like, that is a great point, future me. Rude, but okay. Yeah, stop uh, judging me, but fine. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because maybe I'm just like such a deeply externally motivated person that I needed this other disembodied version of myself to propel me to behave differently. But it worked. Uh, and I was glad mm -hmm. I went and I was like, ah, I was right. Thanks, future judging me. We did that. <laughs> we've started doing the inverse of like pajama day of like there needs to mm -hmm. be like one day of the weekend mm -hmm. where we're not just like over scheduling yes. ourselves to insanity. And Emerson yep. calls it pajama day. And we're now we're That's just great. like, OK, pajama day. We, we've like we're only maybe a few weeks into this, but like. Becky sort of found something similar, like give yourself permission to rest. You don't have to do 75 events. And so we're sort of trying to have like a day on the weekend where we're just not overstuffing it and we can chill. But that is like perfect, right? Because you just need, you need the devil's advocate to mirror back to you. Like, Hey, in this case, your instinct is to do too much. Uh, and what if you stop that? And just like did nothing. And that's the task. The task is stopping. Yes. <laughs> well, and this, I love this because like uh, there's two forces that are exacerbated, three forces that are exas exacerbated for us. I think one is that we do knowledge work. So like when you are physically exhausted, like you can no longer move through space. Like you, to your point about legs, it's like when your legs are jello, you just stop walking like you can't do it anymore. Our brains, we've trained to like push through all of our mental walls and to just keep going, which is not good. But it's also like the training that you have to go through if your brain is your tool, if your brain is the muscle that is producing. So that's one thing. The second thing is that and it's related to the third. Our industry is one that is fundamentally about go, 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 do, 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 early bird catches the worm. Like that's just the nature of consulting in any sort of client service world. And the third is remember capitalism. <laughs> like <laughs> literally we are steeped in a society that says our value is in what we can produce. And like that productivity is fundamentally not just about like uh, there's a point at which it is no longer just about a future you telling you to go to work. It's about you doing anything that someone outside would view as productive. And so Jess, I love what you said because if you turn it into a task, it can help a lot of us that are in the West unlock into that and just like start to just, just to start the impulse to be like rest is virtuous. Um, and then it also, I think one step beyond that is to recognize that like rest is an act of rebellion. 
Like mm-hmm. there's a reason that our future us is judgy and that our future us is instinctively not one who is saying, wait, but like, what if you didn't <laughs> like, it takes a yeah. second beat to get to that version of future us. And it is because we have to push a little bit harder to actually seize rest. And it is a good thing. It's not just about rebellion. It's not just an act against others, but there's a, there's a wall we have to break through in order to actually get that rejuvenation and not reach for the phone and fill mm-hmm. it with whatever algorithm we and and like found. the eyes of babes right like to your point like emerson mm-hmm. is almost six as soon as pajama day started she was like yeah sick now it's like real hard yeah. <laughs> to get her dressed on pajama yes. day or it's like hey yes. why don't you like put on just like comfy pants but like not your pajamas and she's like you said it was pajama day <laughs> I'm That's not also... doing that. Like, and yeah. her life is hyper sked, right? School and after school programs and birthday parties and all the, like, and she's just like, no, like observe the joy of pajama observe day. Like, she doesn't have the same ruts day. that like us olds have where we're just like, yeah, but we could be doing other things. And there's an event right. in this right, space right. and like art or whatever. Yes. And, and she's just like, nah, dog. I'm going to read and maybe I'll play Mario Kart. That sounds sick. Like, Yes. Yes. Well, also, you, one thing that you just touched on there is that, like, kids also have everything provided for them, right? So there's just a lot of things that they don't have to worry about. But then the other thing is that, like, as a uh, life structure, family structure, all of that definitely plays a role in it. Because, like, I'll be talking to my brother on a Saturday. And, like, my Saturdays look very different than his Saturdays and, like, the schedule and how it all plays out. And yet at the same time, we're both sitting there saying, like, wait, but why aren't we allowing ourselves to rest and slow down? Like, how are we both in such different places with different sets of responsibilities, yet we both have this negative, anxious, over, like, overproduced orientation? And that's mm-hmm. sort of like the unlock of like, oh, I'm doing this to myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm literally doing this to myself. I am in control. I am a hardworking human being. I'm doing this to myself and I should stop doing it to myself. So let me not. That is so, it's so interesting too, because now I'm realizing that there are kind of like two possible cycles. Like the thing you're doing to yourself it, of not thinking of your exertion and refueling system in your your date like whatever day-to-day is Mm -hmm. required Mm -hmm. of you and like to your point joey about like the restorative power like that's restoring for that thing maybe it is for for us and in our thought work every day it's like making sure that we are recharged enough for that but there's also this other cycle of just fueling your own interests like not Mm -hmm. just saving up to spend it on the other stuff but like what about the thing for its own sake like fuel for its for the sake of itself um and sometimes that is exertion right like and maybe you're actually under exerting on the for you cycle uh where you have oh you you're like you haven't considered the opportunity cost of exerting for the sake of some external cycle rather than your own individual one like Mm -hmm. this weekend went to do some caretaking with my abu and that is a for me thing and also that is an exertion uh when you're when you're dealing with a a grumpy 102 year old like it's gonna it's gonna take something out of you Mm -hmm. uh so like Mm -hmm. how do you show up well for that that much more personal thing is like you have to maintain a little bit of of both of those right yeah And you're probably getting signals to your point, right? Like you, the part of why you did this was like a punctuated moment, but you already had the signals of what initiated this thing. Like for me, I'm like, this conversation is making me look at some recent, like I am the worst version of myself, like truly the worst Mm. version of myself when I'm being woken up by somebody. Like it is Mm. like, there is, there is like a, (laughs) primal like reptilian like curmudgeon that exists in the moment between actually being awake and being woken up and i'm just like oh that is probably a signal from my body that like hey 
you're not getting enough sleep, which I already know. But like, I'm like, what do I do about this? Like, if someone is waking me up, I am, I just look like, like I'm dripping with venom. And I'm like, (laughs) you know, the answer might be (laughs) going to bed earlier or making room for more sleep. But I have not figured that out. And now I'm like, oh, where are the other signals coming from? Well, to your point about the signals, I have learned that I'm terrible at recognizing, like, I'm not sensitive to my own intellectual exhaustion or, like, mental exhaustion. I can't tell when I'm there. And I've, like, fooled myself into thinking, like, you know, oh, I can just marathon it or whatever the thing is. And it's just like, keep going, keep going, keep going. And in doing this, I've also started, like, my sensitivity to those things is now clearer where it's like, oh, that's when I fall off of that cliff. That's when that, that brain process does not work as well as it should and like there are always going to be times when you have to push through that wall but it can't be your common state because then you're always at you're not best and and one one little other bit to that too i was i don't know if i said it on the pod and if i did well everybody gets more more wisdom today <laughs> free uh, content as well free content somebody said or i overheard the idea of like trying to be your best self is really rooted in that productivity mindset And instead, if you reframe it as um, trying to be your favorite self, it's like a much lighter way to think about it. And it starts to I found myself thinking very differently about, well, what am I going to do when I recognize these triggers? To your point, Jess, am I going to use these just to like build up fuel that I'm spending immediately? Or am I actually first just appreciating that I have fuel for once? (laughs) Like, let my let myself just have fuel. And then if I am going to spend it, how am I going to spend it on things that make me happy about who I am and where I'm going as opposed to just like, let me be the king of the hill, whatever. And like, try to figure out what the hill is and and all of that. Yeah. The, I mean, the triggers are like, we brought it up several times this year, like uh, of that. Like if, if you're mad at everyone, you're probably hungry. Like if you think everyone hates you, you're probably tired like that. Those, Those types of things are the signals. And like, it's been useful to me even when I'm in a moment of feeling that thing. And clearly, as I've just mentioned, like the tiredness thing is probably, is probably, I'm just like, uh, wait, I think I actually feel like everyone hates me right now. And I'm also really tired. (laughs) So like, what do Mm. I do? Uh, Like, I'm getting to the point of maybe trying to like get a little better at, at sort of protecting my sleep. I would say early stages, like Mm -hmm. early stages, Mm -hmm. but I'm, trying because i can suddenly recognize that signal from like your internal state being directly impacted by external things right i'll join you with that because my the only trigger that i know or the only signal that i know is that i become overly punchily affable is my sign that i'm tired because I'm always quite affable, but when it's like when the <laughs> wheels are off and I'm like not giggly, but really goofy, oh, this man's got bags under his eyes that need to go to the train station. <laughs> like that's where I am at. Uh, so I hope to learn more like yours, Joey. I'm going to pay more attention and see if I learn something in all of this, which is good. Um, so I spent some time with my niece, my my brand new niece this weekend, and I think that this might be in her honor sailing into the swaddling corner is that it instead of the wrap-up corner Maybe we swaddle our little brains so our sweet. little sensitive brains mm-hmm. swaddle our little sensitive brains yes yes what's a like, welcome to swaddle corner what's what's what do we learn when someone has a really serious food allergy like peanuts you can tell right away when you have eaten it that something is going horribly wrong and it's really <laughs> easy to know that it's because you ate the peanut that now you feel very, very bad. And the thing you're going to do about it is to avoid peanuts from here on out. (laughs) What's really interesting is that we aren't as good at isolating what it is that makes us feel not so great when it comes to how our brains work. Uh, And there can be so many different factors at play. Um, There can be so many different um, sort of complicating variables that that make it really hard to figure out what that is but maybe it takes closing your eyes maybe it takes a cold plunge maybe it takes 
unsubscribing vigorously from everything you have, but there's something to this idea of rattling the boggle box that is your brain just for a minute to see what new words you can form uh, and figure out where you want to do about that. And maybe it's nothing, but maybe it's something. And goodness knows we all could use a little bit of something right now. Mm. Mm. Here, here. Can can I offer something that you made me think about? This is not a new idea. Is just the four, seven, eight breathing method mm-hmm. has like just as like a here we'll test that out of like deep breath as you can for four seconds, hold your breath for seven, and then out through your mouth for eight. It has like in this sort of hyper simulation thing that we're talking about. I've been employing it for the past two months, and it has been a game changer for me like legit like had a pretty big impact that's cool i can share two more uh one is a five senses awareness exercise where you try to isolate each of the senses of like what am i smelling right now what am i feeling right now and across different you know my from my hands versus my feet uh and you sort of go through all of those different pieces one at a time uh to become more physically present also, unrelatedly, but apparently relatedly, sour candy, uh, if you're stressed, just like, uh, and you are into sour candy, that can be like an interesting sensory short circuit um, that is a useful thing to have on hand. So it's uh, related to the like drink a glass of cold water or like splash cold water on your face. Is uh, It's like an adjacent idea in case you're having mm. a moment. That's cool. Okay. Okay. I've got one too. I've got one too. Great. You're supposed to, cl- it's really good for if you can't fall asleep, you close your eyes and it's the blue ball energy test. And you imagine that you've got blue like energy at the tips of all of your fingers and it's slowly moving from your fingers to the middle of your palm, from your palm up your forearm until all the way until it gets into your heart. And then you slowly, but you start with just your right hand. So you just slowly move that ball of energy, that blue ball of energy through your entire body and you're just imagining where it's going. And um, it takes a lot more time to do that than the 478. Uh, and that's also why it's really good to fall asleep. But by the time that you imagine it all the way down by your toes and then at your knees and all of that as it's moving, it pushes a lot out and allows you to really find them sheet. Find them sheet. I love sheet. these. So I love these. That's it. We did it. Oh, well, that was double wrap. This was a cashmere wrap up going on. <laughs> <laughs> Critical Nonsense is a Sylvain production. Bah, bah, brought to you by me. <laughs> As always, we'd like to thank our executive producer and shepherd, Jess Vander. <laughs> we also need to thank our sound engineer and the wool beneath my wings, Alex Conto. <laughs> We'd like to thank our programming coordinator, and cashmere overcoat bus jacobs and man the 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 incredible production crew that makes this happen every week sorry gilbert nora mestridge thank you wait no there's more there's amy waters there's christy jensen there's so many am i missing anyone who else makes this happen Ah! like a warm pair of andorra socks Uh, and as always Thanks, Alain. Thank you. Special thanks. Special thanks. Lists of four. Guys, four <laughs> is a lot for me. I can barely <laughs> hold on to two in most cases. You know I, I save feel... three oh. and do two. That's my rule. Every... That's my rule. It's very hard. Okay. <laughs> I have three special thanks. I want a special thanks the podcast Reality Gaze because I've gotten really into 90 Day, 90 Day Fiance the other way and their podcast recaps are amazing and I've been able to go back four years to start listening to them from the beginning. So that's oh been great. <laughs> it is awesome. I want to thank Coaster Force, which is a fantastic coaster source of content and news. And then Jess, thank you for men- mentioning Boggle. I've never played Boggle ever in my life. I bought it two weeks ago and I what? still didn't get to play it yet. So what? I'm really excited for this. So basically... What I'm hearing is we're going to mm-hmm. play a virtual boggle game as it yes. is my favorite game. 
so on board. Wow. Sign me up. Wow. I'm here wow. for it. Triple special thanks. Thank you. I played Yahtzee on my birthday and got two Yahtzees. Wow. Whoa. No big deal. <laughs> Can Damn. only be described as Yahtzee. <laughs> um, can I just say that in just in the interest of raps, Mm-hmm. The, mm-hmm. I'd like to give special thanks to a, a business that doesn't exist. <laughs> Stolen Stalin in Stoles, where a bunch of Stalin, a bunch of Stalin, the German bread. This <laughs> is so stupid. A bunch of Stalin, the German bread, <sighs> is stolen and then wrapped in a stole. The, the sad <laughs> sort of scarf type <laughs> entity. <laughs> can't get this out. Oh, God. Stolen, Stalin, in stoles, Mm -hmm. in stores near you. (laughs) Well, God, necessary. Necessary. Is it next to to Eric Repairs? Down the street. It's down the street. Down the street from Eric Repairs Repair Shop. Yes. You just need to use Google Maps. Don't, don't, uh, get on a bike. Don't get on a car. Stolen, Mm -hmm. Stalin, in stalls, in stalls, in stores stolen. near you. <laughs> it's stolen Stalin. Yeah. I like uh, that it's definitely a, uh, a consignment shop, really. Yeah, um, yeah it, right. It's, exactly. the, it's the German totes, 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 totes. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Uh, and thanks to all of you. I mean, you that we're doing this podcast with, but also all you listeners out there. We're at how many, how many times have we been listened to now? Many. 10,000. I think we're over 10,000 downloads at this point. Legitimately. Oh, a hundred thousand. I'm sorry. I don't don't know how numbers work. One order of magnitude. Two or four. That's it. I don't do threes, etc. But yes, thank you for listening. All you listeners from around the world. We really enjoy your ears and your time. So thanks. Thank you. Love you. Mean it. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.